Acts chapter number one, Acts chapter number one, but you, somebody say you, you. will receive power. I love this word, power. It is the Greek word dunamis, okay, where we get uh, our, our English word dynamite. Okay, so there is dynamic power when you receive the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was so into our success that what he did was he made a plan. God had a plan from the very beginning that Jesus would come. He would live a perfect life. He would uh, would be crucified and risen again. And when he went to heaven, what would happen is the Holy Spirit now would come to earth and empower you. So just for those of us who may not know, when we pray the prayer of salvation to receive Jesus, we do put our faith in Jesus, but we don't receive Jesus, we actually receive the person of the Holy Spirit who now dwells on the inside of you and breathes life into you. You can live a powerful life, dunamis, dynamite power in your life. So you don't have to be whining about the sin, oh, the devil's out to get me. Nah, man, you can curb stop the devil because of the power that is dwelling on the inside of you. You have power. Somebody say, power. Look at your neighbor and say, you You. will receive power. Come on, say power. Power Power not to be a jack wagon to your wife. (laughs) Sorry. Um, Maybe I should have said that a little bit nicer, I guess. Power to break the chains of addiction. Power to break the chains of poverty. Power to break the power of sin. Power on the inside of you. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. And you, so let me say you, You. will be my witnesses, which is what we talked about last week. We'll receive power power to be witnesses. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, I can't really share my faith because I'm nervous. But that's not biblical. It's biblical for you to understand that you receive power. Power in the workplace, power in, uh, power at school, power. Let me say power. 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 You will receive, stay here in Jesus' name. Power. Let me say power. Telling people about me everywhere, which is what I want to talk to you about today. Yet last week we left with this question, what is my responsibility? This week we're going to walk away with the question, where do I go? So let me say, where do I go? Well, Jesus let us know where we go. We go everywhere. So let me say, everywhere. We go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The title of today's message is To the Ends of the Earth. To the Ends of the Earth. Let me say everywhere. It's interesting to me that Jesus felt it was necessary to spell out everywhere. Okay? Because to me, everywhere seems pretty self-explanatory. Everywhere. Let me say everywhere. I looked up this word, and it actually means everywhere. It means at home, you have the power to be witnesses. You have the power to be witnesses of the goodness of Jesus to your wife, to your husband, to your kids. You have the power. Well, I just can't handle it. At the end of the day, I'm all I'm I'm all tired and I'm worn out and I just don't have it. Yes, you do have it. You have the power to be the witness that Jesus has called you to be to your wife and to your kids. I don't have the power. My boss drives me nuts. Yes, you do have the power. You just have to lean into the fact that you have it. You have to recognize that I have the power. Somebody say, I have the power. You have the power to do everything, everywhere that God has called you to go. I used to think that when my kids played sports, I just didn't have the power not to yell at the umpire. (laughs) I got kicked out of a few games, everybody. But I just didn't realize that I actually had the power not to be that guy. 
I would yell at the referees from the football games and in the stands. I mean, the stadiums were, you know, decently sized. And, and I started to be, you know, kind of encouraging, like, you can do better. <laughs> you, you can do better. You're better than that. I refuse to believe you're that awful. <laughs> I didn't realize I had the power not to be that guy. It didn't matter where I went or what I did. I had the power to be a witness. How many more people could have experienced the goodness of God had I recognized that I had the power not to be that guy? And I think that some of us are convinced that we don't have the power to be the person that God's called us to be in the places that he puts us. But the places he puts you, he puts you there on purpose. Somebody say everywhere. Everywhere. The places you go involve everywhere. You have the power. Somebody say the power. Shouldn't we know what everywhere means? I think we should, but oftentimes we don't, which is why I think Jesus is a master communicator. He knew people, and he knew that we wouldn't know what it meant. And so what he did was he let us know this is what everywhere means. And so I got a little map right here because Jesus said Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And if we don't study that out, we may not necessarily know what that means. But I want to show you here for just a minute, if I can, Jerusalem. So this is where they were and the city that they were. They were in Jerusalem. So he's saying specifically in the cities that you live. Places where you are, that's where you're called to have the power to be witnesses. So where you work, where you live, where you shop, where you um, go to events, those places you have the power to be his witnesses. And you should be witnesses everywhere that you go because you've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. When you go to work, you should be a witness Well, I don't know, Pastor Matt, because, you know, at my company, if you talk about Jesus, then, well, you know, it's it's a bad look. Okay, but what did Jesus tell you to do as a believer? He said that you'll have the power. That doesn't mean that you have to preach the gospel. You don't have to stand up on the break room table and preach the gospel. What it specifically means is that God will give you power. He'll give you insights. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you the words to say. He'll give you a way to do it that won't put people off, but that will draw people in. He'll give you the power in Jerusalem, in Judea. Okay, see this part of Judea. So it's Jerusalem, the city where we live, but it's also Judea. Maybe the place where we don't necessarily live, but maybe our state or our region, even our country, where God has called us to make an impact, okay? He goes on to say in Samaria, here's Samaria up here. Samaria is outside of our potential places of influence and impact. Does that make sense? And I wanted you to have just a picture of what this looks like. And then he goes on to say to the ends of the earth. That's where you'll have power to be his witnesses. Let me say everywhere. So here's the question. Where do I go? Where do I go? Let me say everywhere. Everywhere. Where, where, Where do I go? Everywhere. Well, Pastor Matt, I'm, I'm a teenager. Where do I go? Everywhere. I'm a business owner. Where do I go? Everywhere. I am a teacher. Where do I go? Everywhere. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Where do I go? Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, I da 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 Where do I go? Everywhere. Everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. And I know some of y'all are not liking me right now, but you go everywhere, everywhere. Jerusalem is for us to minister to those that are inside our world, our sphere of influence, where we have impact every day. Not just our cities necessarily, but our families, we need to make an impact there. Our neighborhoods, we need to make an impact there. Uh, the people that we're doing life with, that we interact with, that are we would consider insiders. We see them, we say, what's up? We know their name. It's our responsibility to take the power of the gospel to be his witnesses there. 
That one person at work that you don't really like, they're an insider and you're called to them. That one lender that you operate with, but you really like that, and that's who you're called to. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The people that you love and you oftentimes overlook because, well, they know that I love them. Well, do you tell them that you love them? They know that God has a gift on their life. Have you told them that? Have you slowed down enough to look them in the eye and deliver the message of the gospel, bringing some encouragement to them? Have you operated in the power for them? Everywhere. The insiders. The second place is this. Where do I go? Where do I go? The second place is Judea, the outsiders. So maybe people that you see and you recognize but you don't necessarily know them, you make assumptions about them. Anybody know anybody like that? They're kind of, they're not in your inner circle. They're not in your sphere of influence. They're just beyond it. And so you know them from a distance and you make assumptions about them. And so you consider sharing Jesus or sharing the gospel, but you don't really go there because they're an outsider. And you think you know about them. You know enough about them to kind of put the brakes on any opportunity that you might have to share Jesus with them or be a witness for him? Well, I got power to lead my family, but I don't have power to lead this person because of what I know, know about them, what I've read about them, what I've heard about them. And so we, cons- we don't consider the fact that we have power. Somebody say power. So Jerusalem, the insiders, those that are in our sphere of influence, Judea, the outsiders, those that are just beyond our sphere of influence. We have the power to reach both. It's not either or, it's both and. So many times we live our lives limited because we feel like we don't have the power, but the lead out statement in this portion of scripture is you will be given power. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If you said yes to Jesus, you have invited the Holy Spirit into your world, and you therefore have the power. You have the power. God, give me the wisdom to employ the power. The third place that we go everywhere, somebody say everywhere, Everywhere. Samaria. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. Because it's not just people that we've heard about that we don't know that we have the power to minister to, but these folks are our enemies. They are our opposites. Like, we do not agree with them. Y'all hear what I'm saying? They got all fired up about the Democratic National Convention. Or they got all fired up about the Republican National Convention. I cannot see how they could possibly go that route. I cannot see or understand why they would possibly have that conversation or vote for that person. I cannot see how we have anything in common. And in a, in a time in our world, in a time in our nation, where the enemy is doing everything he possibly can to pit somebody against somebody else, saying they are my enemy, we're learning through the scripture that God has given us the power to not focus in on our differences, but find the similarities. Where can we unify? Where can we come together? And how could I potentially minister to somebody who's different than me? And not just different than me, but somebody I would consider an enemy. See, because the Jews of this time considered the Samaritans enemies. The Samaritans were multiracial, multiethnic. And so the Jews, the Jews were of pure blood, and, and, and they considered themselves to be better. But it doesn't matter what side you happen to be on, we consider our ways better, don't we? And we consider that way flawed. They're flawed. This is flawed. And we say things that are right, especially those of us that are in churches, and we say things like, I just don't understand how they could, and I'll just be praying for them. Can I challenge you? Don't pray for them if you're not willing to talk to them, because you're a hypocrite. This is my pastoral smile, just saying, I love you so much. (laughs) 
Do not pray for someone you're not willing to minister to. Don't pray about something that you're not willing, willing to step into. Because all that will do is muddy your heart and make you feel more spiritual than you actually are. Wow. Only praying about something is not actually spiritual. Praying about something and then moving on it, that's actually spiritual. Wow. We're called to go everywhere and have power. And some of y'all might be saying, well, I don't want that brand of Christianity. I don't know what other brand there is. You should stop reading your Bible. Actually, you should probably start reading your Bible. <laughs> should I not say that? Oh, okay. <laughs> if you're, can I, can I say something nicely? If you're more passionate about the party that you're affiliated with and willing to say something in support of that party, then you are passionate about your faith in Jesus and willing to say something, being bold about your faith in Jesus. Then I wonder where your salvation really even stands. I love you. Everywhere, even your enemies. Even people who don't like you, even people who stand against you, even people who oppose you, that's Christ-like. It doesn't mean that you agree with them. Maybe your point of agreement is that you disagree. I just can't see that. But it's much more admirable and respectable to disagree with somebody that you're willing to talk to than somebody you're not. I better get to the next point. Um, actually, what bring the team back. Let's bring the Holy Spirit back in. Come on, everybody. Come on. Did y'all feel that? It's like, whoo. <laughs> <laughs> Last but certainly not least, the ends of the earth. Those who are no-siders. So you got Jerusalem, the insiders. Judea, the outsiders. It's the Samaritans who are our enemies, we're opposites. But then the ends of the earth, those people that we hadn't even thought about. I hadn't even thought about. I didn't even, I didn't even know you were here. How many of y'all can relate living in Nebraska? Travel the country, travel the world, man. You say Nebraska and they're like, where, where is that exactly? It's the ends of the earth, bro. You know what I mean? This really jumped on my radar in 2019 when we traveled to Bulgaria. I had heard of Bulgaria before, but I could not have shown you where Bulgaria was on a map. And then I began to think about all of the places that God had really sent me over the years. And I went on a trip to Haiti, which Almost everybody knows where Haiti is now, especially on the heels of, you know, a lot of the things that have been going on. But I didn't know where it was. And then I had the opportunity to go to South America to Guyana, and I had no idea Guyana was even a country. I was like, okay, Bulgaria? Well, no idea, man. No idea. And then Uganda, I had to, I literally, I was like, okay, I got, I've heard of it before. You know what I mean? But I didn't know where it was. And if I'm being honest, man, I hadn't always been super passionate about going to places that I wasn't familiar with or ministering to people that I, you know, like I, I if I'm being honest, I just hadn't even thought about it. And I thought that I was being real spiritual by saying, you know what, God, you called me to Lincoln. Nobody else wants to come to Lincoln, so I'll just hold it down here, and I will, I will, I will, I will work hard in Lincoln, and we'll do, it, we'll do it in Lincoln. And you hear things like, well, why, why do we have people going to Africa when we got problems in America? Praise God for you guys. I hope nobody at Mercy City is like that, or if you are, God's changing your heart.
And then you got other people that are like, well, why would you do anything in America? We got so many problems around the world. It's not either or, it's both and. Because those of us who are believers, we're called everywhere. Everywhere. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to get on a plane or a boat or whatever and you're going to go to Africa and Europe and Asia and all these different things. But maybe, just maybe, through the opportunities that are provided to you, you'll find something new about something that I can make an impact with my $42 a month to change somebody's world and be a witness for Jesus. Maybe I won't go there, but that doesn't mean that I shouldn't think about it. Doesn't mean that my heart shouldn't be open to it. Doesn't mean that I shouldn't operate in compassion. And that's where I was. I realized, and Pastor Kerry and I realized that even as we traveled around the U.S., our compassion levels had gone down instead of up. We were more disconnected than we were connected. And the kingdom of heaven had become so small. But those of us who are in the kingdom, those of us who are empowered by the Holy Spirit, are called everywhere. And so part of my challenge as your pastor, and I know that if I was struggling, many of us in our rooms are probably struggling. We cannot be people that it's us for and no more. Well, we're good. We're, we're holed up here in Lincoln and Seward, and we got, no, we can't be those people. It's not the kingdom. It might be a cute church, but it's not the kingdom of heaven. And we're called to be people of the kingdom. In fact, I think that many of us, our problems have become so big because that's all we focus on. We focus on our stuff, my house, my cars, my kids, my marriage, only. But I wonder if we lifted our eyes up and if we begin to focus on what about their marriage? What about their family? What about those kids? What about that city? What about that region? What about that country? I wonder if God could expand our world in such a way that we began to pray away, but he would bless at home. I've seen it in my world. I've seen it in my life take place. And I think God wants to do it as we go to the ends of the earth. It's not either or. It's both and. I remember several years ago, we had this family that was connected at our church and they were driving from the south side of Lincoln, which you know, you drive from the south side of Lincoln to the north side of Lincoln, you might as well be driving to Africa in the minds of many people, you know what I mean? And I remember, I remember they said to us, they started going to another church further south and they just said, you know, we just haven't been able to connect with many people like us. And I thought, well, you're at the wrong church anyway, because that ain't even the heart. And then a couple months later, I heard that they were going on a missions trip, going to Mexico. And I thought, how messed up is that? You won't drive across town to be with people that aren't like you. But you'll go to another country to encounter people like you, that aren't like you. How messed up, how small vision, how short-sighted, how absolutely void of the kingdom is that? But then on the flip side, we've had people ministering here at home to the, to the homeless and the down and the outer. 
but then providing opportunity to go maybe on an international trip or maybe cross the state lines trip and they say, well, no, I'm doing ministry right here. Who on earth ever convinced you that it had to be either or? I'm convinced that if somebody convinced you that it had to be either or, that person convincing you was empowered by somebody who's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit empowers you to go everywhere. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We don't stop short and we don't look beyond. We look everywhere at everyone because everyone always belongs. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of the kingdom. That's the compassion that we are called to operate in. That's it. That's it. That's it. And so I want to ask you this morning as we're wrapping up, have you been stuck? Last week we left and I said, what's our responsibility? Let's pray about this. But some of us were vexed in our spirits. We're like, oh man, I'm, I'm sensing something, but I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know how to handle this. And it was because we couldn't reconcile the where. Should I do it here? Should I do it there? Should I, I, well, I And so I just want to put your minds at ease. I want to let your spirits rest. The answer is yes. The answer is everywhere. Don't overcommit. But I wonder if you would commit. With every eye closed and every head bowed, you might be in here today and say, Pastor Matt, I've been stuck. I took, I took a packet last week and I didn't make the next step because I'm just stuck. I believe this is your moment to get unstuck. Well, where do I go? What do I do? Everywhere. Not all at the same time. But God will show you what your next step is. If that's you and you've just felt stuck and I haven't known where to go, I haven't known what to do, I didn't know what my responsibility is. Come on, in all of our rooms, would you just lift your hand? Right where you're seated, would you just lift your hand? Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your boldness. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, if that's you, would you just lift both hands? Father, thank you for every hand that is lifted. Thank you for every heart that is open wide. I pray in the name of Jesus that as we felt stuck, and maybe as we felt stuck, we've been frustrated, sensing on the inside of us there's something else, there's something more, there's a next step. God, I pray that you would break the chains, that you would unstick our wheels, that we might be able to move forward in our life would matter for something more, something new, something real, something powerful, something life-giving, something life-altering. Do in us, oh God. Do through us, oh God, what only you can. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Thank you so much for watching this week's message. Our vision at Mercy City is to connect people to the heart of God and to the house of God, and that includes you. We have some amazing next steps that we want to walk you through to discover all that God has for your life. Visit our website, mercycity.church, and click on Next Steps under the Connect dropdown. If you'd like to receive prayer, please email us at pastors at mercycity.church. We love you and can't wait to see you in person next week.